uh, I have explained you the working of a barometer that is used in measuring the atmospheric pressure. Now, in today's class, uh, we'll discuss about variation of atmospheric pressure with altitude. So we know that atmospheric pressure is not the same at everywhere in the atmosphere. It is maximum at the sea level, minimum at the height, very high in the atmosphere. So gradually the atmospheric pressure decreases as we move along the atmosphere or above the earth surface. So how does it change and what helps it brings to our daily life? That is what we are going to study today. So now use of barometer. Barometer is used uh, differently like three different uses of barometer are there. First one is to measure the atmospheric pressure at a place. Okay, barometer is used to measure the atmospheric pressure. We can read easily through a barometer. Second one is for weather forecasting. So uh, to know the weather beforehand we can use a barometer. Third one is use an altimeter to measure the height. To measure the height at different places a uh, barometer is also used. So we will discuss all these three topics. First one is to measure the atmospheric pressure at place. Now atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude due to two reasons. Okay, There are two reasons why atmospheric pressure decreases at altitude. First one is decrease in height of air column which causes decrease in the atmospheric pressure. Because we know that air molecules, air column is thick at the earth surface as we gradually move on from above the earth surface, the air molecules or the density is less. So if this is earth surface, the, it is very dense, the air molecules is very dense at the surface. As we gradually move on, it becomes thin. The air column becomes thin. Okay? And as we move on to the atmosphere, it becomes very sparse. Okay. Now, because of this air column which is thick at the earth surface, that is why atmospheric pressure is also more. Which is because of the height of the air column. That in different altitudes, different heights, atmospheric pressure is different. Another one is density of air. Over in the earth surface, exactly above the earth surface, the air density is more. As we go on, air density becomes less. These are the two reasons why atmospheric pressure is different at different levels. Now, the atmosphere can be considered to be consist of a number of parallel layers. Air parallel layers. I have already shown you thick layer, again it becomes thin, then again thin, thin and very thin. So there are thick and thin layers of atmosphere. Now why does it become like this? Because there is a force acting down there. Okay? In the earth surface, there is a force. So this force exerts on the air molecule. So all the air molecule moves downward. So it gets collected over the earth surface. So more at the earth surface, there will be more number of air molecules which exerts pressure. So the density at the earth surface is more because of the pressure from the upper layer of the atmosphere. Now. Uh, since the lower, lower level layers get compressed due to weight or the layers of the upper surfaces, therefore the density of air layers is more near the earth surface. So because it gets, um, it gets compressed, the density at this surface is more. So density is maximum at the earth surface, density of air becomes minimum at certain height. Now consequence of this. What are the consequences? At height, at high altitude, since the atmospheric pressure is less, breathing becomes difficult. Okay, breathing becomes very difficult and nose bleeding may occur. Nose bleeding is very common at high altitudes. And if you have a high blood pressure, you are not advised to go on high altitudes. Because the blood pressure and the atmospheric pressure may create a huge difference. And we know that for our body to balance, the blood pressure should match up with the atmospheric pressure, it should be nearly equal so that our body can be balanced. If it creates a huge difference between the blood pressure and the outside pressure, then our body will be affected. Another one is in high altitudes, our fountain pen or ink pen starts leaking. That is one of the reasons of not matching with the atmospheric pressure. Like the atmospheric pressure at high altitudes becomes less, 
but the pressure inside your fondant pen is still the maximum. It doesn't change. So when there is a difference of pressure, the, uh, out the inside pressure will give the pressure to the uh, ink and it will start spilling outside because of the not matching of uh, pressure inside the fountain pen and outside that is the atmosphere. That is what happens or uh, to uh, atmospheric pressure difference is different at different places. Now the second thing is for weather forecasting. I told you how uh, it, uh, the atmospheric pressure or barometer helps in checking the weather. weather. So it is, it is in the weather forecast by using a barometer. Now, the atmospheric pressure at a place is affected by the change in temperature and the amount of water vapors present in the air at that time. So whenever there is a change of water vapor, whenever there is a dry air, the atmospheric pressure changes. How does it changes? The reason is that the density of air changes with the change in temperature and with the change of water vapor in it. That is, what is making the difference is the density of the air molecules with uh, moisture in it, with dry air, with temperature, the density of the air changes. How does it depend? The density of the air increases with increase in temperature. So when, we, when the temperature is more, when there is a very sunny day, the density of the air molecule increases. Okay, the density increases. So if density increases, it also increases the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure increases with density. Now what does the density make, uh, density it decreases with? When there is air molecules, when there is moisture in the air, humid days, when there is, the climate is humid, or amount of moisture present in the humid air, makes the atmospheric pressure decrease. Okay, to let the atmospheric pressure decrease. Thus, the change of atmospheric pressure helps us to know about the weather in advance. Now, if the barometric height is placed suddenly, uh, at a place suddenly falls, if the height of the barometer, uh, mercury in the barometer decreases, it means that the pressure at that place has decreased. Okay, the pressure has decreased, which indicates the coming of a storm or a cyclone. So, if there is uh, the if the liquid that is mercury inside the barometer is decreased, if height is decreased, then you have to imagine that the density has decreased. Now, what makes the density decrease? Because of the moisture present in the atmosphere, and with that moisture, what we have to make out is the moisture brings. It is an indication of a storm or a cyclone. Now, if the barometric height gradually falls, okay? Now, if it suddenly falls at one point, then we have to uh, think that storm is about to come. If it falls gradually, if it falls gradually, slowly, with a very uniform type of speed, then it indicates that moisture is increasing. It is a possibility of rain. So, if it falls, slowly, gradually, then we have to think that there is moisture in the air and it is about to rain. Now another thing is the gradual increase in the barometric height. So if there is a huge increase in the barometric height, atmospheric pressure has increased. So there is dry weather. That is how they uh, do the weather forecasting before. If the barometric height is increased, dry weather, it is uh, not going to rain that day. If there is a sudden rise in the barometric height, the sudden rise in the barometric height means that flow of air from one place to another surrounding low pressure areas. This indicates the coming of extreme dry, dry weather. So if it, the barometric height if it increases suddenly, then there will be extreme dry weather, which means that there will be extreme dry air flowing around. The last one is if there is no abrupt change in barometric height. So if the barometric height or the mercury doesn't change that much, it indicates that atmospheric pressure is normal. That means the atmosphere is normal, the weather will remain unchanged. So this is how the weather forecasting is done beforehand using a barometer. Now that was the second use of a barometer. Now the third one is altimeter. As from the name itself, altimeter measures the height. Now I have told you at different heights, the barometer shows different reading because the atmosphere changes 
and with the change in the altitude, the barometer reading will also change. At high altitudes, the barometer reading will be very small because atmospheric pressure is small. At a low altitude, in the earth surface, the barometric height will be large because atmospheric pressure is large. So from there, they have made this device known as altimeter, specially used in aircrafts. Because in aircrafts, they don't know whether at what heights they are flying. So in aircrafts, they use altimeter to know or to check the height above the sea level. So that is the use of an altimeter. According to the change in height, atmospheric pressure changes and from that they can assume what height they are flying at. So that is the use of an altimeter. So today we have discussed about three different uses of a barometer. These are very important for your examination. Okay? So please note this down. That is bar barometer used as to check the atmospheric pressure. Second one for weather forecasting and third one is used as an altimeter. So these are the uses of barometer. With this, we come and end to this chapter. In the next class, I will be doing few numericals to end this chapter. And from another class, we will be starting a new chapter. Uh, basically, more or less, I have finished four chapter in, the, in this online class itself. Uh, I think hardly three chapter is there. So I hope we will be able to finish the syllabus at this moment. So this much for today. Thank you.